Okay, so today we're going to take a look at OData and a web API project in Visual Studio 2013. Let's go ahead and start by making an MVC4 web application. We'll choose the web API template. And over here in SQL Studio Express, we have the AdventureWorks 2012 database with a department table. And you can see we've got 16 records on the right hand side. Over here in MVC, what we want to do is add three different things. A data model, a controller, and the config route. Let's start by doing the model. We'll design it from a database, spin up a new connection to SQL Express, AdventureWorks 2012, test successful. And any framework 5 is our default choice. And here we select which tables to bring over as entities. We also have views and stored procedures. But for us, we're going to do the department table. Looking at the SQL schema, it's a simple one. We've got four columns. Department ID is a primary key, auto increment. And we've got a date and name and group name. Okay, so Entity Framework gives us this canvas on the left. We see our table and fields. Let's go ahead and click on the background and hit F4. Here we have a namespace. We want to change that and actually make it MVC Application 1 to match the compiled name of our parent project. This is going to help with the metadata that's generated for things like Breeze on the client side. Okay, with that part done, we can right click Controllers and actually before we do that let's build we need things compiled to go ahead and get that new class into the IntelliSense now we can do add controller and we want to do an API controller with read write actions so yep this is us right here and the context class is going to be AdventureWorks but the specific model is department and these choices are available only after we did the build. Okay, so our new controller class has been generated, and we want this to inherit from OData controller, not API controller. If we right click, we can resolve the namespace for the header. Looks good. We have our get method. We have the get with an ID. So some of my different testing and research I found that ID seems to work better when replaced with the word key so the auto-generated code if you change ID over to key sometimes works a little better and uh, let me go ahead and make that change here's one more reference Okay, looks good. So we have our Entity Framework model first, controller second, and we want to go to Web API Config third. We'll go ahead and comment out the route that's here by default. I have some sample code I'll go ahead and paste in, and we'll right click on the object names to resolve the namespace up here for OData Builder. In this particular class, we're defining the type department and we're giving it a friendly name of departments plural actually it's a good point because our controller was named default one it's kind of a bad name let's go ahead and change that to departments excellent okay so over here on the route config we have the class type department and then the plural departments is the string for URL navigation. We're mapping an OData route. And finally, we enable query support. Let's go ahead and build that. OK, now that our project successfully builds, we can hit F5 to run. And here we see the generic web API homepage. If we append it with slash OData, we're given a list of the entities available, which is departments, so OData slash departments gives us a list of all our departments. 
So we're accessing a SQL Server table over HTTP and getting a JSON data type in return. If we do OData slash dollar metadata, we get a detailed descriptor of the entities as well as the available fields. Here we can see the integer for department ID, two strings, date time, and over here is the namespace that we set up, MVC application. That'll be important later if you use a client-side framework like Breeze. Okay, now for OData departments, let's go over to REST Postman. This is a plugin for Chrome that's great for doing REST activity. It has a history on the left-hand side. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see the output. So here's our return set, and we just put in our URL. It's a git action. Let's go ahead and change that, and we'll do departments one, and we'll send. So here we have our JSON coming back. We have our primary key. We're doing a git. Looks nice. Let's change that to departments two. Now we get back a different single row. Really cool, simple, easy to use. Um, let's go ahead and try a different verb. Let's do a post. We want to try to add some data. So at this point, let's go ahead and delete some of this. Okay. And for department ID, we're just going to leave it at number zero because it's going to automatically issue a new one. We'll put video test for name and group name, and we'll change the year. And uh, over here on headers, we're going to do content type to let it know here's what we're providing application JSON. And we're going to send that just to departments, no index number. And a post is basically an insert. So let's go ahead and send that over. All right, there we go. After our change compiled, we can see we did a post and we got back 235 for video test. Over here, we can see ID 235 for video test. Excellent. So we're actually adding data to a SQL table with JavaScript. Change the numbers here, send again. This one says 236, HTTP 201 created. So we get our status code back. We're getting back our primary key. Switch over to SQL. We see multiple rows added. Fantastic, really cool stuff. So if we go ahead and reset the whole request, do one of these gets for 235. Here we can see our data. That's awesome. So we did a post insert, a get to read it. We know it's coming back through. Let's go ahead and do a delete on 235. There it is. Deleted. That was easy. Now if we want to do an update, we'll try 236. Let's go ahead and first issue a get. See what data is out there. And we want to do a put verb for doing updates. So this is going to be content type, application JSON, looking at the raw representation, OK, and updated. We'll do a little suffix here. And you see the primary key is actually specified twice, once in the body and then also in the URL. So we actually have it in two places updated all right we're ready to send got back a status 200 go over to sql and refresh we see updated so we did re we did all four crud create read update and delete using rest postman against a web api endpoint that only took a few minutes to create and now we're actually changing our data in a sql table with http pretty cool very interesting technology and a lot of different applications. Thanks for watching.